are in a climate crisis and we need to immediately and promptly remove greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. Peatlands are the densest store of carbon in many landscapes and they are a carbon sequestering powerhouse and when they're functioning and, and undisturbed, they're able to sequester carbon at a rate far higher than many other ecosystems, leading them to be a nature-based solution to our climate crisis. In the city of Sudbury, there are 81,000 hectares which have been highly damaged by sulfur dioxide and metal pollution. And uh, these areas uh, needed restoration and uh, there have been active restoration program to try and do this. Our past industrial legacy has led to landscapes that are polluted with contaminants such as nickel, copper, lead and arsenic. We are figuring out different techniques that we might be able to use to restore the nearly 6,000 hectares of polluted peatlands in the Sudbury region. We need to find ways of restoring the slagging peat mosses uh, to the system so that instead of being a carbon uh, source as they are now, they become a carbon sink. This can be achieved because if you're looking at true carbon accounting, then you should be taking into account in the, in the large area that Sudbury is, it's one of the largest municipalities in Canada, that if we have uh, degraded peatland which are emitting uh, greenhouse gases, it's going to make it much harder for the city to be truly uh, a carbon neutral city. So these little mosses, peat mosses, these are the ecosystem engineers of peatlands. So what they do is through their actual biology and the way they grow, they create the conditions that define these wetlands. So one thing that they do is they exchange hydrogen ions for the nutrients that they need. What this does is completely acidifies the local environment around them. So this creates the very specific acidic nutrient poor conditions that make the peatland largely inhospitable for some species, but exactly what other species need. There's a very well-established, globally recognized peatland restoration method called the moss layer transfer technique that was developed by Canadian researchers. And so we're modifying that technique to these industrial contaminated peatlands. The moss layer transfer technique was developed for extracted peatlands that had been drained for horticultural peat production. And so they were very dry environments. As you can see in the peatland behind me, water is not really a problem here. It's the metal contaminations that are causing the mosses to die. Prior to the industrialization of this area, these were all very healthy peatland ecosystems. These polluted peatlands lack the sphagnum mosses that are responsible for many of them being carbon sequestering powerhouses. We need to develop restoration techniques to combat this and return the sphagnum mosses because many of the restoration techniques that we've developed in the past are focused on other disturbances such as drainage or horticultural peat extraction. In our field experiment, we're testing three different restoration techniques and we'll be monitoring the hydrology, the chemistry, and the plant growth over a number of years. At the same time, we're also conducting controlled laboratory and greenhouse experiments to test these techniques and others under ideal growth conditions. And in this way, we can really get at the mechanisms of the plant and microbiological responses, as well as the movement of the contaminants and the hydrology. And we're really excited and hopeful that with these complementary approaches that we are gonna find solutions. All of these are building blocks to designing a restoration methodology that can be applied to the other 6,000 hectares of peatlands in this area. Peatlands are complex ecosystems. Because of that, we can't just rely on any one discipline to solve these problems. We work at the intersection of ecology, plant physiology, biogeochemistry, hydrology, paleolimnology, because we need all of these different disciplines to actually understand how to restore the sphagnum moss in these contaminated peatlands. So restoring peatlands requires a diverse team of experts because no one aspect of the restoration can be achieved by any one discipline. The interplay of hydrology and biology and ecology is just too intertwined for any one person to do this by themselves. As we look to the future, we're gonna take the techniques and the lessons learned from this experiment to scale up and mechanize the process so that we can apply it to the landscape here in Sudbury, as well as using the lessons learned to the many thousands of contaminated peatlands around the globe. 
Valley Canada Limited is very supportive of any sort of restoration uh, research or technologies um, that, that will provide an overall benefit to ecosystems here in Sudbury. We understand that unfortunately, historically, we have had a negative impact on our landscape and uh, supporting initiatives of, of this nature are one of the ways that we feel uh, we can give back uh, to the environment uh, here in Sudbury. In the fight against climate change, we need to be developing new and novel techniques to take carbon out of the atmosphere. We see these degraded peatlands, these contaminated peatlands, as important nature-based solutions in our fight against climate change.